it seems like you've certainly reached a point where most people would say you're successful in life. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a pretty crazy journey so far. But something that I've realized now when I look back on those times when I started to become something greater was that I was actually afraid to be successful for the majority of my life. Afraid to be successful? Isn't that what everyone wants? What do you mean? Take me through that. Well, I guess we would have to start back in 2015, Labor Day weekend, which was my freshman year in college. Oh, yeah! 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 Holy shit! Oi! I knew you got that! Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Damn, bro, burrito. It's good to be back, baby. <laughs> it was our first break back from college, and I was with all of my buddies that I went to high school with. And this night acted as a sort of test to make sure that our binge drinking abilities hadn't been nullified. We basically wanted to prove to each other that we were still the guys we had all grown up with together. How are we feeling so far, boys? I am feeling like I'm at my peak, but I haven't even started yet. Think about it. The fuck is this dude on, man? You might have to take this guy's beer away from yeah, him. Fuck off, fuck off. All right, remember, this guy is still two beers behind the oh, rest of us. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm in it for the long game. I'm in it for the long game. The fact of the matter is, you guys are going to be tapped out before me, and I'm going to be going all oh, night okay. long. Right, bro. Right, right, right. Except for the fact that, historically, you've been the one that's been able to drink the least out of all of us. And I Buddy, highly doubt. I you highly are already doubt. drunk off of one beer. <laughs> I highly doubt that a couple of months in college can even change anything. This was who I was. This is all I knew. So you were really on that college frat boy type of vibe, huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely was. And it was still, till this day, some of the most fun I've ever had. But now I know that a big part of the reason as to why I decided to constantly be a degenerate was to purposefully self-sabotage. I didn't know it at the time, but my behavior clearly exemplified someone who was actively trying to avoid the lifestyle of a high performer. And it's not like I didn't have it in me. I just didn't want to admit that I had it in me and face what comes with that. I think we all do this to some extent. We use a ton of distractions and adopt the identity of someone who doesn't really want to be great to make sure we never are. Luckily, I had friends who were much more aware of my negative attributes than myself. There he is. Spend a minute. Dude, yeah. You look interesting. Yeah, I... We all drank too much last night. Well, hey, I'm excited to hear about it. Let's go get some food first. My stomach's fucking killing me. So, what was the damage this time? Well, we were at our usual place, Rumsey Park, and we had just... This is our first time back from college, so, you know, we had to show up for each other. Which, by the way, has been absolutely fucking crazy in and of itself. Yeah, that, uh, that sounds about right. And where were you last night, huh? Couldn't waste your precious shut-eye, Mr. Health? God, this weekend is not that long. I've just been getting pummeled with all these assignments from my physics class and my engineering class. You know what they're making us do for engineering? We have to write a theory about the future of technology and where it's headed. 
and then write at least a paragraph in response to every other person's post about whether we agree or disagree with them. Bro, they did not prepare us for this college shit. This blackboard assignments, they're so painfully excruciating. I kind of miss the days where we were in Miss Grader's English class and she was so oblivious and old. Dude, do you remember, uh, remember that time we tricked her into opening that malware link and she had to cancel class for the whole rest of the week? Yup. Yeah, uh, we were actually, like, evil. We were evil kids. Now look at us, we're in our 20s. Yeah. It's weird. But I do think that all the superficial blackboard replies are going to pay off in the end when we have our degrees. Yeah, I guess. You still think that you're going to finish college with that computer science degree? What is that supposed to mean? You don't think I'm smart enough? That's not what I'm saying. It's just that, I mean, you've been complaining about it ever since you decided to commit to it. Yeah, I'm allowed to complain about the major that I wasn't super passionate about. What else was I supposed to do? Do some dead-end major like psychology or philosophy? Okay, what makes you think you'd be broke doing that? Okay, maybe you'd have to work a little harder than someone with a more valuable degree or something. But I mean, I think someone should follow their truth, you know, and, and do what makes them feel most fulfilled, even if it doesn't meet society's definition of what success is supposed to mean in the end. Oh, okay, Socrates, I don't need the lecture. I'm perfectly fine with doing computer science. What are you so afraid of? I mean, why do you care so much about impressing other people or, or your parents? It's not even that. Even if I did decide to choose a major that I'm actually interested in, then there's no guarantee that it would work out. So why would I not just choose the thing that has the best chance of working out in the end? I mean, that's like... Come on, man. You're a gifted engineer, right? Run the predictions and calculations for me. Does that make any sense cool. logically? When you're talking about... Deciding if you're gonna go after your dreams, the last thing you should be worried about is if it's logically sound. I mean, that, that's why they're called dreams. It's not that big of a deal. I wanna be able to afford things and not have to worry about where my next paycheck is gonna come from. I don't need some sort of unrealistic, grandiose lifestyle that's to fulfill me. That's not what I'm I saying. I never fuck with you over your major. So why are you always fucking with me over mine? Nothing I've said is fucking with you. If you weren't so insecure about what being successful comes with, then maybe you'd actually listen to what I'm saying. God, I mean, I mean, dude, I... I love the shit out of you. But you are capable of so much more than this. You are. I mean, dude, you were, you were always the person that was encouraging us to go and do those, those crazy adventures and... and Filming those those funny little skits on your parents' camcorder. And you actually got good grades. I mean, okay. You, for a short period of time, actually got good grades. You know, but... We're 20. It's time to start taking this shit seriously. What we do in this decade is going to determine the next five decades after that. So you have to start really thinking about this shit. Anyway, um, I should probably get going, but it was really good seeing you, even if it was just a little bit. So, tell me how the next semester goes. Yeah, see you, man. I'll probably see you in winter then. change your mindset. You have to change your routine. You have to cut people out of your life that are dragging you down with them. 
You have to find that motivation deep down in you and spark that fuse. You have to push harder. I'm really not sure what happened to me that night. It felt like I had woken up with a tick that had been fed cocaine. I was finally fed up with myself. So I tried to figure out what it was that I wanted to do. I started by looking at my childhood, which held some clues about my interests. I did that for a pretty long while, but didn't really dig up anything at all. But just when I thought that all past knowledge of that coal that existed before society's creation of the current coal was nowhere to be found, I stumbled upon this photo of me as a kid. It was the biggest aha moment for me. Like, dude, you used to love reading and writing. You know those scholastic book fairs they used to set up in the library once every year with all the catalogs, books, and shit? <laughs> Yeah, I remember those. I used to beg my parents to give me 10 bucks every time that the Scholastic Book Fair came. I would peer through the window in the library, I'd gaze at all the books lined up, and I'd wonder what world I was going to be transported into. And every new book I would pick up, I would write a short story with myself in it. And I was just so intrigued by that entire process. Wow. that That's really cool, dude. Right? And... I must have just given up on it completely once I got past those adolescent years and into my teenage years of following the masses. But now, at this point, I was ready to capitalize on it. Of course, I was filled with uncertainty, especially given all the stories I'd heard of starving writers whose publications never hit the mainstream until they die. But in that moment, I just didn't care. I knew that I wanted to write. What the fuck am I doing? And that's what everybody listening to this needs to understand. Absolutely nothing is going to make sense at the start. And that's the point. So by this point, I went back to college after break, and my entire focus was dedicated to becoming a better writer. My grades, although you know they were slightly unimportant before, they became almost irrelevant to me at this point. After way too much planning, thinking that maybe just one more book, article, or YouTube video on how to write a blog would help, I actually got around to starting the blog. There were a few iterations that I went through for the title, but I ended up deciding on the possibility of progress. What made the possibility of progress be the title that was chosen? Honestly, it just sounded catchy at the time, at least to my college self, which was still recovering from a Ford Loco-induced coma. But I knew that I wanted to write short stories about my past and how I've overcome them. And I knew that I wanted to write about stories that were currently going on and how I got through them, kind of like an open journal. That's such a great way to look at it. And when you started, were there difficulties you had to overcome or did it come naturally? Well, like any random person who decides to share their personal opinions on the internet in a professional way, it started out suboptimal.
tried at least I mean it wasn't very good but you just I, mean, I thought I was fucking good shut your noise silence when I run the voice yes. all right man I'm heading back to my dorm yes. all right brother I'll see you love you love you man hello hey dude what are you doing right now it's good you little shit and you're hammered. I am perfectly coherent, actually. Right, okay. Um, anyways, I finally got a chance to check out that first blog post that you put, and honestly, dude, it was really solid. I, um, I love that one about how you got a scar trying to impress that girl that you had a crush on in, in middle school, and uh, yeah, it was really hilarious, and it had a good lesson at the end, too. So you were the one fucking person who decided to read my shitty blog. Why do you think it's shitty? Because nobody fucking cares about it. Nobody read a single thing that I wrote. Honestly, I don't fucking blame them. Come on, you you literally just, like, started. You, what, posted, like, two, two posts so far? Yeah, uh, two views, and one of them is from somebody that I know. This shit is never going to fucking take off. I should have never listened to your shitty ass pep talk. I just think if you actually stuck with- You shut the fuck up already. All you do is shove shitty advice down my throat. I don't care if you're some all-knowing Buddha because you have connections at your Ivy League school that your parents got you. All right. Coming from the guy who gave up on his dream after just two posts and is now taking it out on his friend who is just trying to help him. I bet you didn't even send it to our other friends because you are just so afraid of how they're gonna respond, am I right? You are a trust fund baby. You know what? I, I don't I don't give a shit what you do, okay? Piss your life away, go work a corporate job you don't like because the fact of the matter is, you're too much of a pussy to actually stay disciplined and not get discouraged after a little bit of failure. And you're now projecting all of that frustration you have for the lack of success you've seen so far onto me because you don't want to keep yourself accountable. Because you know what? That would require that you actually set a standard for yourself to do what you actually want to do with your blog. Because that would require someone who doesn't go out every fucking weekend and drink and get wasted. But yeah, yeah, I'm the problem. Keep making excuses then. Fucking ass. He was right, you know. About? Just like I told you at the beginning, I was afraid to be successful. I loved the idea of success and the freedom and fulfillment that came with it, but I didn't love what I actually had to do to become successful. You know, people love to say, I'm terrified I'll never become who I want, but I was terrified I would be. Although my massive ego at the time would have never admitted he was right, what he said definitely struck a chord in me. And after that point, I was just like, all right, you know what? Fuck you. I'm going to prove you wrong. I made a vow to myself that I would write at least one blog post every single day for three entire months. Even if I was swamped with schoolwork or I wouldn't get enough sleep, I had to get that blog post out by 11.59 p.m. that night.
We're gonna have a fucking night. Hello? Yo, what's good, fat bread? Fat bread. You do realize that joke is ridiculously outdated, right? And it never gets old. So, uh, when am I seeing you home this break? Hope you've been keeping up the pace with the brews. I'm actually not coming home for winter break. What? I haven't seen you in months, dude. Don't you want to see the boys and, you know, your, your biological family? Well, now that classes are about to be over, I want to put my full focus into my blog. A blog? Whose blog? Mine. And when did you start writing on this blog? About a few months ago. I've been really enjoying it, actually. Oh, why didn't you tell the group chat? I don't know, it didn't come up, it just didn't seem important. Uh, I guess that makes sense. What's it called? It's called The Possibility of Progress. I'm actually pulling it up on my laptop right now. <laughs> yeah, see, that's why I didn't tell you. I don't know, man, that's just not you. What do you know about me apart from our bond that's been held together by beer? Bro, what? I start taking my life seriously and following my passion, and you suddenly think I'm not being myself. That's pretty telling. All right, Ernest Hemingway, it's not that big of a deal. You don't need to be that uptight. So, what's it about? I gotta go, man. I'll probably see you spring break or something. What the fuck was that? Asshole. Now that winter was when things really started to pick up. I mean, shit, I gave up drinking completely, I started taking care of my body, and the blog was unlocking new self-discoveries that I thought were previously not possible for me to access. And when it almost came time to start going back to classes, that's when something life-changing started happening. We fucking did it! 350 posts later, I had gotten my first viral piece. To my surprise, it wasn't the most articulate, well-structured, verbose piece I've ever written. It was a story about the loneliness I had faced in my dorm room that winter, and how I was fighting it through sheer passion. It's funny how that works, right? The posts that are the most vulnerable, that connect with people's souls, are the ones that do the best. Yeah, definitely learned that over the past couple years, but... What was an even bigger lesson at that time was just how much having a larger audience opens up the floodgates for more criticism. I found out through one of my friends I hadn't seen in a while that some of my closest friends were sharing around my blog posts saying things like, bro thinks he's an English teacher and what no bitches does to a motherfucker. But it didn't really get to me. Really? Why is that? Well. I had judged that nobody who I really admired who was above me was roasting me for my work. That just doesn't happen. Everyone who had already achieved what I wanted to achieve had at one point been in my shoes. So the people whose opinions held a lot of weight were always rooting for me. And it was only the people projecting their insecurity about their position in life who were too scared to do something that I was doing. Besides, of course, the actually good constructive criticism. Sounds like you learned a lot from Joey after all. Ah... Uh, yeah, that was another thing, that writing made me stop being such an emotional bitch, too. Which is kind of ironic because people see writing as a feminine thing. Oh, hi, honey. How's everything going? Hey, Mom. Everything's been great. Good, good. And what about your classwork? Uh, I'm working on it, but I'm actually calling to give you an update. Oh, yeah? What happened? You know the blog I've been writing? Of course. I've been keeping up with every single one. Well, it's gotten to the point where I'm now able to move into my own place using the money I've been generating from it. Oh my god, Cole. That's amazing. Thank you. I'm, I've been good. I'm really happy. I bet you can't wait to tell your friends, huh? Yeah. My friends. Moving me down the highway. Rolling me down the highway. Like a north wind whistling down the sky I've got a song I've got a song 
Like a whirlpool well and the babies cry I've got a song I've got a song And I carry it with me and I sing it loud If it gets me nowhere I go there proud Moving me down the highway Rolling me down the highway Moving the hills and I won't pass me by I like to end off these podcasts the same way, by asking the guests for a challenge to leave the audience with. What's a challenge that comes to mind? The last thing I would say is this. Every night when you look in the mirror, you're looking at someone who you will never see again. But that person looks familiar enough in order to convince you to not take action. So when is the day going to come where you look in the mirror and what you see is no longer a previous copy of yesterday. Right now, now, today is the time. Dude, that was fucking awesome. Thanks, man. I mean, you make it easy to open up about this kind of stuff. It's kind of like you were built for podcasting. It's like you're built for writing. I'm trying to be. Wait, I don't have time to ask. Whatever happened to your friends? Are you guys still in contact? Uh, pretty sure they don't fuck with me anymore. I tried contacting them about a month ago, but I didn't get a response. How many times have you tried contacting them? Uh, just once. Once? And you think that's enough? Well, when you put it like that, it sounds stupid. Yeah. Dude, try one more time. Worst case scenario, they ghost you. But at least you'll know that you have some closure. That's true. They just want to see you win. And they have too much pride to tell you. And you have too much pride too. Edgar oh. Allan Poe's great grandson. That's a poet. <laughs> uh, poet, blogger. It's all writing, isn't it? I guess, yeah. Hey, well, let me get you a beer. Nah, I'm good. Ah, oh, come on, man. One or two beers. Hey, it could give you good ideas for writing content. Yeah, no, I decided to quit. All right. Well. Looks like we have a DD to drive us home safely tonight. Now that I can do. So, what have you fucks been up to recently? Uh, not much. 
Yeah, same old shit with college. Mostly just trying to redeem my god awful grades from last semester. Yo. Um, We're at your house. Oh, beautiful. You beautiful man. <laughs> All right. I guess I'll see you in the summer. We'll see. All right. Peace, man. I'll see you. Good to see you. It was cold yellow.